And what's the most courageous thing you've ever done? I think the most courageous thing that I've ever done is when I graduated from college, um, I was encouraged by a mentor that instead of pursuing my five-year plan, that I should um, ask God what I should do with my life and go with that. And I, I did, and I felt God, felt God was saying, go to Mozambique. And at the time, I thought, well, this is kind of crazy um, because I have no money. I had just graduated from college. You know, my Korean parents are expecting me to go find a job. But when I approached them with um, this, uh, this option and this idea of, of trying to live a life where um, I'm guided by my faith instead of you know, needing to make money or needing to make a name for myself, my parents actually agreed and I, I went to Mozambique. Um, and as a result, um, living and working and serving with the poor, um, it really set the foundation for the rest of my life. And making that first choice of choosing to live a life, um, taking steps of faith instead of living out of fear, um, really set the course for the rest of my life. Okay, and what are you doing now? What is your project about? I'm currently um, Director of Marketing and Communications for the Bitcoin Foundation. And Bitcoin is a technological platform in which, you know, for the first time in history, we've discovered how to send value or money over the internet. And this, is, um, this has huge social and economic implications, especially for um, the people around the world that are unbanked. And how would this transform their lives? Um, so global financial inclusion is a huge priority for the foundation because when we think about the current global financial system, um, in order to qualify to be a part of that, you have to have some sort of, of, of credit and some sort of economic stability. But over half the world's population lives in economic instability. And so as a result, they live on, you know, sometimes one, less than a dollar a day or two dollars a day. And they have no, no way of saving their income. They have no way of investing and growing their income. They have no way of accessing credit in order to um, either jumpstart businesses or create more economic income where they're at. Um, what Bitcoin enables someone to do, let's say um, a widowed mom in a dirt hut in the middle of Africa, as long as she has a mobile phone, she is able to send and receive money. She's able to save money. She's able to securely save it. Um, and she's also able to start up an enterprise and sell goods, not just in her local village, but to the city next door, or if she has internet connection, then to a global marketplace. How does how do Bitcoin and PayPal sit together? Are they uh, uh, opposed or are they com um, collaborative? So um, actually, the um, the team at PayPal and eBay they're you know obviously looking into Bitcoin since it is um, so innovative as a as a project. Um, the the difference between PayPal and Bitcoin is that PayPal they are the third party system. So currently, if you want to send money around the world, you need a third party, whether it's a bank, a credit card company, or PayPal. Um, and Bitcoin is actually what PayPal originally achieved to set out, or set out to achieve, um, in that they wanted to create a um, third party list system of sending money. But they, they fell short of it because the cryptographic research was just not there. In Bitcoin, um, you don't need a third party. It's a direct um, transaction, peer to peer. And the genius in Bitcoin is we have figured out how to automatically record transactions. So currently, if you want to send money to someone else, you need a bank, a credit card company, or PayPal to record the transaction to prevent double spending, to prove that you have sent this money and spent the money. In Bitcoin, all of the transactions are automatically recorded on a public ledger. And so you completely cut out the third party. And how do you get around currency exchanges? So that's, so that's an interesting question. Um, when it comes to currency exchanges, um, currently if you want to, you know, for example, go from the US to the EU, you have to exchange into their local currency, um, pay an exchange fee. Bitcoin has the potential to be a truly uh, global currency where whether I'm from the US and traveling to the EU or living and working in Africa, um, I can use Bitcoin without having to go through a currency exchange system. That's cool. So are the <laughs> banks trembling? You know, it's, it's 
split 50-50 um, when it comes to banks and their understanding of Bitcoin. Um, you have some banks that think Bitcoin is, is a dumb idea. They think, oh, this will never work, people will never understand it. But then there are other banks who see Bitcoin for what it is, an innovative technology, and they see the business opportunity there. Because what a lot of people don't know is a lot of companies like Visa and MasterCard, they've actually spent, um, they've actually poured money into research and development to develop the technology that Bitcoin is. So could you work with them or you're instead of them? Some people think that, you know, Bitcoin has the potential to replace banks altogether. But from a foundation's perspective, what we'd like to see is banks integrate and adopt the technology so that we can achieve our goals for global financial inclusion. So what's the most courageous project you're about to embark on? <laughs> uh, the most courageous project that actually my husband and I are about to embark on um, is the idea of having children. Um, and that for us, well, I think more so for me, is very scary because um, the responsibility of raising a human being and raising one well is a very big one. And I think I'm afraid that, you know, I might screw it up or I might not do it right. Um, and so this is something that my husband and I are being very prayerful about and, and trying to make a decision that's based on faith and not fear. Um, and so that is the next courageous project we're working on.